Hi, I'm Caitlin e, and welcome to the Lit Review. Today we're going to start what I hope to be a new series here on the Lit Review and that is called Love to Loathe To. So it's a series where I'm going to tell you about two things within books that I really love and two things I'm not so fond of. I feel like the word loathe might be a bit strong for some of these things, but I just, I wanted to alliterate and have a snappy title, so here we are. These could be really anything. This could be like tropes, this could be character types, you know, devices that get used in writing, you know, just anything within the realm of books that I am either really drawn in by or not so much. Uh, and so today we're going to be focusing on some time periods or like settings that I either really like or don't like so much. Uh, and so I'll give you two examples, two like really concrete examples of each so that you can understand where I'm coming from. And I'll also give you some other like really quick references just to get a better sense of what I like or don't like. But then the real fun thing is that I would like your recommendations for both categories. Because if you know of something that, I, that I've mentioned that I already love and you think, oh my gosh, you need to read this, I want to know about it. At the same time, the two things that I mentioned as loathing, I'd like you to try to change my mind. I'd like you to give me some recs that you, that you think I just won't be able to resist. And then what I'll do is that I'll read all four, I'll pick two of each again, so two and two. Uh, I'll pick two of, from each category based on your recommendations. And then I will do either a vlog or a wrap up as I read these things over time. So my goal is to be able to do this kind of slow roll over a couple of months um, and then just film things as I, as I watch them. Let me know uh, additionally if you would rather have that in vlog format or whether I should just do a wrap up after it's all said and done. Because this is really going to be a collaboration between the, all of us together here. And the first kind of segment of two that we're talking about I mentioned is going to be like time periods or settings. So one of the settings that I really love is World War II. And World War I as well, like I'm not excluding World War I by any particular bias, but I do tend to find more books within the World War II space than World War I, but the dramatic World War landscape and the many different perspectives that often come within that setting are endlessly fascinating to me. So some examples, my two concrete examples for you, The Book Thief by Marcus Zuzik. This is kind of perennial favorite on booktube. You can see it's even got a little shiny award thing, but this is more like YA uh, and I really love the perspective on this because the narrator is death. You are following a specific young girl named Liesel and it all kind of starts when she picks up a book in the snow, when books have been banned and burned because she is living in uh, the th during the Third Reich in Germany, so like Nazi Germany. Uh, and she really starts noticing a lot of big changes in her community and is participating them in them, but also really uncomfortable with some of them at the same time. It's really emotive, really beautifully written, and is one of my kind of hallmark reads within that setting space. Um, I also really like the originality of having death as the narrator, like that kind of twist is really cool. And um, other books that I think do that um, with like some kind of narrative twist really well, like I also really love Atonement by Ian McEwan. Uh, number one, I think that's one of the greatest adaptations, period, I've ever seen in terms of book to film but the book itself is still really awesome uh, and has like this really great narrative twist of being from the sister's perspective. So I like how many perspectives are often available within that setting. Um, and I just really like the landscape of World War II because it feels like it's been romanticized so much. And sometimes reading those books, like you partake in that romanticism, but also it's just, there's so many different complex ways to get at the heart of the emotion there. And I find that really interesting. But for context, uh, The Book Thief gets a 4.37 on average rating on a platform like Goodreads. I gave it a four stars when I was reading it. Uh, I really liked it. I mentioned Atonement. That one I gave a five star and Goodreads has that averaging out at 3.9. Just to give you a sense of like how invested I am versus like what other people think of this book and it's kind of tropes and types. 
so another really good example, uh, so my like official first example of books I love would be like The Book Thief, Marcus Zusek. Uh, and supporting example of that is Atonement by Ian McEwan. So then the other official second one that I'm going to give you as a recommendation, if you too like World War II settings, uh, is I think that this is also a space because it's so romanticized, because it's so part of like a cultural consciousness, you can do really cool twists on this setting in ways that are really satisfying. So a thing that I have consumed quite a bit of and really love is actually the DC Bombshells graphic novel series or comic series. Uh, and this is Margaret Bennett or Marguerite Bennett and Marguerite Sauvage. Like, I love it so much. If you have never read this series, it is basically like pinup style DC heroes and villains, but they're all women. Like they're almost all exclusively women and it's set during World War II. And so you get a lot of like really cool retro pinup style, but you also get really cool new takes on some really beloved DC characters. So like the first couple panels of this, it's like you meet Batwoman for the first time and she like saves Bruce Wayne and his family. So like it completely changes. It's an AU that completely changes the landscape of how we think of the DC Batman universe, except, you know, now it's Batwoman. And here, of course, the cover has this gorgeous art with Wonder Woman. So I love this entire series uh, and really thought that what they were doing with the setting of World War II and like the changes they made to a canonical existing series were so powerful and cool. And so I love how that setting had this huge impact. Um, for, so this is my like second big example. My other kind of call out is one that I've mentioned a ton here on this channel, so I will not go over it extensively, but David Mack's uh, Dark Arts series. So specifically the Midnight Front is set during World War II. And then the Iron Codex, which I've read here since I've started this channel, uh, is like during the Cold War right after World War II, but like that setting is so exciting and those books are so exciting because they're set within that cultural time period, but are like twisted because you are talking about like summoning demons and the occult and like witchcraft and wizardry. And it's just, it's so interesting to have that twist in such a romanticized cultural setting. Like it's, it to me, that is just really exciting what, seeing what authors do with it. I gave this five stars. Goodreads averages it at 3.98. So it's almost a four star average rating on Goodreads highly recommend these. And then uh, The Midnight Front I gave four stars to and Goodreads has that one at 3.68 uh, as an average rating, just to let you know like how the community feels about it versus how I tend to feel about it. So like those are some of the things that I really love about some books that are set during World War II. I feel like I could go on and on about this because you've seen me read a handful since I started this channel, like Dear Mrs. Bird by A.J. Pierce. Um, I'm really excited to read some Kate Quinn, because I know she has some stuff out. Like I just, I get drawn in by this time period. Uh, and I can't fully articulate why. I just think that it's really popular in publishing. So there's a lot of it, but it's also really satisfying to read. I, I don't know. So please let me know down in the comments below what are, you know, if you only have one recommendation, if you have more than two, but I'm going to kind of collect everybody's thoughts and then see what comes up the most frequently. Uh, but what are recommendations that you have for me about World War II settings? Let me know, hit me up. The next part is gonna be the stuff that I don't like as much. Uh, and so sometimes when I was doing some like self-reflecting about this, I was trying to think like, what are some things that I just don't read that much? And I'm just not drawn in by them. Some of the things that I've read, I've liked okay, but like I don't go back to this place or this setting very often. And that's Westerns, specifically like the American West is not a time period or setting that I find myself returning to time and again. Uh, in fact, I think I kind of avoid it. Uh, so that's my loathe to, and I don't have the books physically here with me because obviously I've not kept up with them. Uh, one, I'll put the cover up here, but it is kind of a reimagining 
of the American West, because I've talked to you about a couple of books on the flip side of this that are reimaginings, uh, and it's Care and Memory by Elizabeth Bear. So ultimately, I gave that three stars. Like, that's not a bad rating for me at all, but I just, it's a series, it's the first book in a series, and I've never gone back to that series. I've never finished it, never even really thought of finishing it. I gave it a three star. Goodre Goodreads average is at it out at 3.73. So like I'm kind of floating along with the average of this book, but like what I remember enjoying about it actually had nothing to do with the American West. I remember liking the LGBT components of the book and like that was really interesting, but I wasn't invested in the characters. I wasn't invested in the setting. Even though I will consume and enjoy like Western or Western adjacent film or television, books just don't do it for me. Like the Karen memory, I don't know. It was like such a cool concept and I didn't hate it, but I, I don't know. I just wasn't into like the Western vibe and the, you know, like aesthetic of that novel was really stylized and it could really work for somebody, but it just didn't work for me to that point. Like, stop, like, I have also never read any of the iconic Western author Louis Lamour, or like Louis Lamour. Like, I know that he's a huge, prolific, old school Western author, but like, I've never read any of his books and never felt any desire to read his books. Uh, so like, the Westerns, ugh, you know? Uh, the other one is another good example of me having kind of like complicated feelings about this genre type or this sp setting and space is Cormac McCarthy's No Country for Old Men. So I had to read this in college for a class about adaptations. It was a really cool class. <laughs> uh, and I gave that book at the time two stars. I haven't returned to it and reread it as like a, a with my current life perspective, but on average, Goodreads gives this a 4.14 stars, which is pretty high, and I rated it pretty low. I remember when we got to the part where we watched the film, I remember thinking that the film was actually a really good adaptation of the book and really uh, did a good job, and I enjoyed the film. But I gave the book two stars. <laughs> like, I did not, I, it was okay. I didn't hate it, but I didn't like it. <laughs> And I just remember so much of that being about the setting. Like, I like that kind of murder mystery f feeling of almost true crime. Uh, and there's a lot about, like, outlaws that I really enjoy reading about. But, like, the, the neo-Western setting of that, just, like, I, I hated it. <laughs> it just wasn't for me. I also don't read a lot about, like, cowboys. In romance, like that's a huge subgenre within romance, and I don't read a lot of Western romance. Like some of my favorite romance authors have done Western themed romances, and I just those are the ones I don't pick up. <laughs> like I I don't know when I started to resist this setting and time period. But I really have. And much like World War II, I think the American West has been like really mythologized, especially for us here in the US. But like, think about all the media that comes out of the like the Western world about the American West and like how mythologized that space is. And so it's doing very similar like cultural work that World War II is in terms of romanticizing things. And there's a lot of cool tropes that come out of westerns and I just don't get invested. I don't know what that's about. But like they both often cover like social atrocities too. Like both of these have a lot of similarities and so it boggles my mind that one of them is something I can't stop consuming and the other is one I studiously avoid. Like because both cover things like you know human rights violations, uh, cultural atrocities, like oppression and like just there's so much and there's but there's also a huge undercurrent of hope to both of those time periods when we think back on them and like there's so much that's similar between the two of them and yet I don't want anything to do with one I don't know so <laughs> 
please let me know what are some of your recommendations for anything within the Western time period genre that you think I could fall for, that you think could change my mind about this attitude that I apparently have about Westerns. Uh, so specifically with all of these, with, or with both of these settings, I'm looking for book recommendations. It could be anything within, like, could be nonfiction, fiction, it could be any, any genre. Just because I've called out a couple of specific genres or things with either of these doesn't mean that you should feel forced to only recommend me things that are exact duplicates. Like, what do you think I would like <laughs> within World War II and Westerns? And we'll see how it goes. Uh, I will start to collect the recommendations that you give after like a week uh, after this video has been up, and I will also make sure uh, to post some Instagram story questions and maybe Twitter. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where this pans out, but I'll definitely do it on my Instagram stories as well. And just to see what recommendations come out of that space. Uh, and then we'll come back together and I will let you know how this goes. I would love for this to be a ongoing series on this channel that I do a couple times a year. So also let me know. If you don't have recommendations for what I love or loathe here, hit me up with what you think I should do next. Should I focus on a character? Should I focus on like a trope? Or, you know, like what, what should I focus on next for my next love to loathe to? Um, but yeah, I know it's a lot. I'm asking a lot for you, but <laughs> please let me know down below what you'd like to see next. Thank you for spending time with me. I hope you have a fantastic reading day. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more from me or this channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!